Hello, I am Pedro Bennett from MarshallsDown.com. Today's date is November the 6th, 2015. And today we have a special guest today. We have Grandmaster Vincent McKetty. And Mr. Yeah. Grandmaster McKetty has been in the Marshalls for many, many, many years. And sir, I really want to thank you for allowing MarshallsDown.com to interview you. And um, welcome. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Thanks for asking me. Um, it's my pleasure. Right. You know, I invited you because um, I, I read about you many, many years ago. I actually met you back in uh, 2000. Initially, I, I met you in 2007 when I was inducted into the um, world head of, of um, Soki um, uh, as Master of the Year. I forgot to tell you that when we last spoke. But uh, regardless of that, um, if you would, please tell us about yourself. Would you tell us about your system and about your experience and, and about your training? <laughs> That's a long, long story of uh, 60, <laughs> 60, 63, 64 years now. <laughs> it's a long, oh. long story. Well, I, I, didn't started, I started in judo when I was 12. There was nothing else in this country. I started in judo and people didn't even know what judo was. And I was 12 years old and I was... Uh, uh, tough kid. I, was, uh, I uh, went back and forth to Texas many times. My father was from Texas. My mother was from Jersey City. And I did a lot of fighting with 11 schools change. And I, uh, my mother put me with my uncle for a while. I learned to box. He was a heavyweight fighter. And he was all-service heavyweight champ, which meant he beat everybody in the Navy. And then he beat the winner of the Marines and winner of the Air Force. And so... Um, he was teaching me to box and put me in uh, a boys club of America and we called Revere Club and, and those clubs to learn how to box. I was young and because I was, uh, thought I was a tough kid. Anyway, uh, I wound up leaving home when I did go back home with my mother and father. I wound up leaving home being stubborn and stupid like all kids back then. And not that I was a bad kid stealing, I just was always fighting. And from that, I wound up fighting underground fights for the mob in Jersey and fighting in uh, Chinatown and Patterson and Sig, New Jersey and Jersey City and Sea Caucus and having uh, a lot of fights and bare fisted fights on three or four layers of dirty rugs put into factories and slaughterhouses and box companies and at night and have the yuppies out of New York coming out of Wall Street because we were right outside New York City. And uh, I made that's how I made my money. I lived in a furnished room. Also was a fighter called Chuck Webner, who is now the real Rocky. And they're doing his life story with Leif Shriver and Naomi Watts in New York now. And uh, he is my friend. And my best man for 57 years now, we're friends. We see each other three or four times a year. He comes to Florida. And in any case, that's, we're both in a book, along with other greats in there, uh, called Tough Guys. It was, this book was written by John Wyatt. And there's 60 men in the United States, a lot of them MMA fighters. And... Uh, is you know, and Jerry Cooney and and uh, uh, there's a lot of a lot of good names and, and in any case uh, we're we're still close and still friends and I'm supposed to go to New York to teach uh, Naomi Watts and Leave Shriver and uh, I won't do that until after the holidays you know because I can't take the cold so. It doesn't matter. I still have a school in New Jersey, which is the oldest in America. We're closing it on, I think, 48 or 49 years uh, mm -hmm. in the same place. You know, its name is Carney Martial Arts, and I go up there uh, usually every three months and set the programs and straighten everything out and, and continue. I've been offered franchises and everything else and I would never did it because I think that one school is enough for one teacher if you want to keep control. We never advertised ever. Got a waiting list to get in. 
about a hundred students or a hundred and ten students, and it's a big school with a gym upstairs. And that's my legacy. My legacy is teaching police violence up and down the East Coast, and now teaching just the military for free. And that's what I do, and that's what I love. And I'll be 77 in a few months, and I'm still healthy, and and I still love what I do. Um, I've only had two jobs my whole life, and I quit both. <laughs> it's one. When the martial arts were the most important in my life. Well, I mean, two, two, over, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I, it's quite extensive, I'm going to say, and, and um, you have quite a variety of, of experiences from uh, many, many arenas, and and I applaud you for doing work with law enforcement and and um, working with military and, and individuals in which you work um, by providing a free service, because often you don't see that. Um, that just shows what a grandmaster, the true grandmaster that you, that you are. And uh, another reason why uh, MarshallsNow.com is um, it's an honor for MarshallsNow.com to to interview you. You know, and you, you presented quite a, a mindful of um, of experiences. And um, to have a school to be open so long and to have a vast number of students and don't have to worry about um, you know soliciting. Uh, for for students, I mean, I, I'm sure many schools would envy you or your school or your organization, and just shows the diligence and the your sharpness, intelligence to be so organized and to be a leader. So I just want to uh, applaud you for that. And and in saying what you said, you said a mouthful. If you, <laughs> if you were to choose one word, what one word would you use uh, to describe yourself? Um, I don't know, I'm just, a, I hold honor and respect and dignity very high, but that I'm very honest. What I say is what is true, good or bad, and I sh my handshake means everything to me, so I don't know what word I can say, but I, I, I pride myself on being uh, honest and true. Yeah. Right now, wh why do you promote honesty and um, you know trustworthiness and all this thing? Why why is that important to you? Uh, it's I think I believe it's the size of a man. You shake somebody's hand and you make a deal. It's the deal, whatever it is, and that's the end of it. There's no backing out. There's no um, changing your format and. And being honest and true with the parents that come in with their children, and being honest and true that you want to select your students. I don't take people that drink a lot, and if they smoke, I make them quit if they want to belong to the school, because endurance is a big part of martial arts, and thinking clearly, and trying to win the fight without fighting is a philosophy in spite of that my students named the school the house of pain that i always explain to them that nobody wins in a fight i don't care how good you are nobody wins in a fight you go to jail and you get hit and nobody walks you away without getting hurt in one way or another so i teach them to respect mainly respect everyone we have three forms of respect in my school, which is self-respect first for everyone, children five years old. I don't take them less, and I don't even take them at five unless they can absorb and be controlled where they will learn. So self-respect, respect of speech, respect of uh, uh, their clothes, respect of their practice and their workouts, and Secondly, is respect of their mother and father and family. And third is respect for everyone else. You know, to to say yes, sir, no, sir, yes, mom, no, mom, et cetera. You know, so, you know, we base everything on respect. Uh, I mean, that's, that, that, is, that is great. Uh, you know, I often ask um, pretty much the same um, question here. I'm going to like to ask you as I interviewed the Grand Masters, um, 
how has your training changed over the years or how has how, how has martial arts let's let's put it another way how has martial arts changed over the years um you know many many years ago uh, when i started taking uh, karate and i was already a black belt in judo and i crisscrossed with um Sensei Don Nagel, who was the first one who ever entered the country with karate out of Okinawa. And right after that, Peter Urban, who uh, was the two gentlemen that signed my certificate, along with the third, Michael D. Pasquale Sr., who uh, signed my certificates to be a grandmaster, which I really wasn't looking for or wanted, but they pushed me into it. Um, I, I took karate, and everything in karate was uh, punching the walls and punching the floors and doing push-ups on the knuckles and things like that. And I had, like Peter Urban, I had uh, two huge knuckles and learned to break rocks and, and uh, river rock, rocks and patio blocks and bricks, send the blocks like everyone else. Well... But my, my blocks were real. I didn't soak them. I didn't fake them. And, and uh, I had pain in my hands, pain in my arms. And I couldn't move my two fingers separately. The knuckles were stuck together with calcium. And, and the marrow turned to calcium from beating on them all the time and 100 punches in a cinder block wall a day. And I found out that, you know, that, that was not good which wasn't the right thing to do. The children make them do push-ups on their knuckles and break boards and things like that. It's not right. They need the dexterity in their fingers now for computers and for instruments and things. So that's a change I made. And, and some people don't think it was right, but I believe it was right because of what I went through. So we don't do push-ups on the knuckles. We don't do the breaking and things like that. I teach them if necessary, how to punch, how to hold the fist, and let the wrist follow the fist, the knuckles, let the, the arm follow the wrist, and make it a piston and, and a punch. But I don't let them hurt their knuckles because nowadays with the, the Internet and, and everything like that, they, it's wrong to destroy the knuckles. That was done in the Japanese days of turning your hand into a weapon. That's not necessary anymore. You know, with the jiu-jitsu that the adults learn, the good self-defense that the children learn, they don't need to punch anybody. They can take them down and control them and hold them down and talk to them. So we eliminated all of that part of, you know, we, we do karate in the school, we do judo, and we do jiu-jitsu, or strong self-defense for children. But we don't do chokes for children. We don't do anything that will hurt another child. They, they, they don't have the mind and the control of the techniques, so we don't teach them those things. But that's how we change from the old days to the more modern days. The, the workouts are still hard and, and lengthy, and uh, they do work out and they do get better or that they don't get a promotion. We don't do one-year or two-year promotions. We do five, seven, eight years, whatever it takes to be a black belt. Children cannot make black belt until they're 150 pounds or 16 years old. Then they can start into an adult class <clears throat> to work for that black belt, but not until they can become a junior black belt and as a junior black belt, they move on to an adult class eventually when they get to that weight or age. And they'll put a year in there and learn the techniques that are upgraded in an adult class from what they already learned. And then, and only then, they can go through another test to be a full black belt. It's, uh, we don't give children a falsified black belt as a child that they think they can be, you know, uh, from my teaching in my life, a black belt only means you're ready to learn, to start with, and you are now a thinking person and learning to be a leader, learning to be in self-control, and not necessarily the best fighter in the world.
as of yet. But, you know, and, uh, giving you a, <laughs> a small thing, many years ago a child asked me, Sensei, you tell us not to fight, yet you tell us to respect. And we, I don't understand. And I asked my mom, and she told me to ask you, why do we learn to fight so well and you tell us not to fight? And I said, it's all based on respect. You respect everyone and you don't fight. And when you get somebody who disrespects you, your parents, or anybody else, and wants to hurt you or your family, then you're going to teach them respect by being a great fighter. Um, and, and that's my only explanation I could give a child to make them understand that the last thing you want to do is fight. But you still have to have it in the background. Be able to control yourself and your hands, what you do. Well, I'm, that's I'm, the, that's I'm, the difference I'm, of old and new. <laughs> well, I mean, I applaud you for making that transformation. And that's what uh, martialartsnow.com represent. it represents the past, the present, and the future. And it's good that we see that you have made that transition because as we look at, you know, word, the word marshal, you know, we think of law enforcement, we think of military. And as you allude to, you have made that transition. Well, once the Okinawans and Japanese, you know, they had to train their body in order to protect their country, et cetera. There's no need for us to do that as in the way that they did because all the other weapons and the way that we look at things is totally it's totally different, and um, it's good that you are, you know, enlightening individuals to 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 make that transformation. Unfortunately, sometimes I hate to say that um, some of us, some individuals are still, I would say, in the dark or still using primitive tools for the 21st century. So at 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 some time we're going to have to make the transformation due to the laws that we have and the, how society has has changed has transformed. So um, again, uh, um, we are we are applauding you for you know being bold enough to to make that change and understanding the damage. But one thing you you you're doing for your students is you helping them to create the cognitive ability. You helping to develop the frontal lobe by um, working on uh, the the fitness. And unfortunately, that's what's happening with a lot of schools that they don't offer a lot of the physical fitness that's going to relate to developing you know, the emotions that you're doing and learning how to walk away and, and defend himself as well. So, I mean, uh, again, i like to applaud you for, for that. Well, um, thank you. But strength comes in many ways. Strength comes in your mind, mostly, because your mind wins the fight as well, whether it's to talk, fight out, and win with your mind uh, without fighting or in a fight. Your mind wins at all, in every respect. And, uh, you know, we don't, like I said, we don't teach the children the chokes and suffocation, strangulation moves or anything like that, or things that they can really hurt them. And someone with, and, and you know, that, that comes slight, in a slight bit in the teenagers, we step up a little bit, and the adults, we step up, but the adults are selected. We take about one out of every three adults that come through the door and that's selected on on many things, on drinking and if they want to give up their cigarettes and and if it's a family thing and if they're, I mean, I get them out of, out of places, they think they're a tough guy, they want to come in and I want a black belt and if that's what you want and this is the wrong school because you're not going to get it with their attitude and, and, and by trying to buy it, I've had many people trying to buy that black belt and resign their certificates and people learned off of for computers and tapes and want to come in and get a certificate. I said, I, I can I can sell you a black belt, but you're never going to get a certificate with it. I can sell you one now. And you walk around with it until you get beat up. But, you know, you're not going to get the certificate that goes with it and the training that goes with it. You know, by, by paying. That's not what it's about. You know, yeah, you know I, I've been offered $1,000 to sign people's certificate, put them under, under my, my name. I'm not going to ever do that. I, you know, that's selling yourself out. But, but Rob, I, I understand. And, and you know, you, you mentioned I, I wanted to chuckle just a little bit. Uh, I spoke to um, Sheehan uh, Roseberry, and what he had mentioned is that um, 
similar situation in which you just spoke in which individuals want him to uh, sign a certificate and he refused to. And often he referred people to go train with their grandmaster and their grandmaster is grandmaster YouTube. <laughs> I yeah, found right. That's yeah. true. <laughs> oh, you can, yeah, you can go to any magazine and get a black belt. There's <laughs> people, there's people out there and that in the world Shoki council, you know, I run the meetings and in mm. the meetings, I, I tell them anybody's caught doing that and advertising a magazine can, you know, to, to send the tape or to send uh, books on uh, videos and things and to, you know, to get a black belt. That's ridiculous that they can't belong to the council. That's not, you know, that's not the true martial arts. And, you know, you're given a, um, selling a black belt to someone who has not earned it right in front of your eyes, you know. So, you know, and we have our standards in the World Council, and the World Council, uh, as you know, that uh, we're pretty strict on on who we accept, and, 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 and you know, we go through your grandmaster and your lineage, you know, and we vote on it, and then you have to appear before us and do a test, you know, and so forth and so on. And, you know, um, in the last test was one of the only times that three people passed, I think, in the history of our organization, three out of three. The year before, I think it was one out of three passed. And we told the other two, you got to go home and work out, you know, and, and, and find your techniques, you know. But, you know, it's just to keep an organization that stays pure. Everybody wants the membership for their banquet. But, you know, that, we don't have that problem with it. It's just the problem of people coming in with false certificates that are uh, getting promoted every year not spaced, you know, for higher ranks especially, and 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 then dropping out and coming back and counting those years that they dropped out. You know. So, you know, their their lineage is uh, you know investigated, uh, certificates uh, must be presented, and I guess I'm one of the hard noses uh, of the three people on the board that uh, you know I paid my dues with my whole life. And I don't want anybody standing next to me, you know, that is going to stand next to me with the same rank and and dictate what should be and shouldn't be. We have rules, and those rules uh, we discuss in the meetings. I don't we know you, you attended the meeting, but, you know, I mean, this, from the slightest things and not to go into a uh, dressing room with a child unless you have a parent or somebody else with you, if you have a problem with the child's pants, or you have a problem with the child crying, or whatever. But whatever it is, we are careful with everything. There's been so many of these men that have ruined the name in martial arts. And we make our rules that um, we'd like you to do this, we'd like you to do that, and, and this is the right way, and this is the wrong way. You know, and not not to disgrace the the martial arts because when one does it, we're all looked at bad. Right. You know, we've had this, as you know, and you're you're a member. You know, you know that I'm a little hard in the meetings about saying things and doing things and and having an inheritance of system. Don't die without you know, without standing up and be careful of certificates. I mean. Um, Peter Irvin was dying on the bed, and they asked him for certificates for doing promotion, and five certificates wound up in five people's hands that turned out to be grandmasters. Mm. I mean, there's there's a lot of stories in the background. I taught in the Ishiru system uh, <clears throat> under under Sensei Nagel. They invited me in to be on the ALKA board, American Okinawa Association. You know, and with Ralph Passaro, I gave seminars to the schools. I did seminars in the Bayonne Gymnasium along their uh, national meeting in judo and jiu-jitsu in Baymark. And and actually, I wasn't part of the Ishiru system. Uh, you know, I, I, I trained in, in Goshiru and Goshindo, you know, when Van Letten was Goshindo. And then we went to get Goshiru, and I, that's the system I trained in. But they just gave me 
a black belt certificate, be a black belt in Israel, which they've offered years back, but I, I, I don't take nothing that I haven't earned. And I was put on a plaque that is hanging now in the town hall in, in, in New Jersey, here in, uh, in Jersey City. Was Jersey, in, uh, Don Nagel was in Jersey City detective and a college detective, and they put a plaque in the town hall, and my name is in the plaque as one of the followers of the Asian Roof System. You know, and... and you know, I, I just, uh, I have principles that are very strong, and so does everyone else in the organization of uh, the World, World Soviet Council that you belong to, and I'm proud of that. Right, right. And then, and, and I think, you know, I, you know, my, my thing is, I, you know, I appreciate training the artists because I really take it serious, and, you know, the thousands of hours I, I put in, you know, and I, I make it a quest, particularly over the last um, two or three years to make contact with grandmasters because my objective is to find out what connection do the grandmaster have? You know, oftentimes people just look at a grandmaster or a person may classify himself as a grandmaster because they won tournaments or et cetera, et cetera. But what I see in a grandmaster is someone that could represent other individuals, someone that can mentor other, um, other individuals based on their experience. Do, do you see it the same, or if well, is it... I, I, I got to say, you hit on a big point for me. You know, um, I believe that a Grand Master's title is, is just a title. But when right. you put so many years, so many hours, so many days, so many, you know, I mean, you, to put yourself in, in tip-top condition, like I can still get on the mat and do two hard hours of seminar, you know, continuously at my age. And I can still fight, and I do. I can still roll around the mat, and I do. I can still do judo and make throws and blindfolded. So uh, that is only one aspect of yes. what we do. But as a grandmaster, I mean, your job and your obligation back to your students, and everyone is your student. Yes. Um, sir, you are my student. And I mean, it's my job to pull you up because of your dedication, because of your knowledge, is to pull you up with me. If you're a good person and you're a good practitioner and your life is clean, then it's my job not to let you sit without, a, without a, an instructor, without help, without uh, looking to help you get in, in a better situation, better people in your circle. It's my job. To, to lean over and pull you up with me. You know, it's not my job to we should walk around and strut and push everybody away from you. And, and, you know, and, I, and I've crossed those lines with people and had arguments with people. I've taken uh, three people under my wing. Uh, Bob Long, who was under Serengano. Peter Serengano died, who was a friend of mine in Staten Island. And he had two students under him that didn't want to stay under Peter Sarangano's son. Felix Sarangano's son. He's a nice guy, but he was a comedian and a puppeteer. And I think there's a picture of him with his puppet on Facebook at this time. And they didn't want to stay under him. Because he never was really on the mat. He didn't know what he was doing. So... Uh, they were both in the martial arts for many, many years. Bobby Long, I know, maybe 25 years. And he, he, I said to him, Bob, you can start your own system. You're super quality. He's, he's worked with the best of people on the mat, best everywhere. And he did. And I had uh, Peter Urban, Sensei Nagel, and about... 15 other people signed that certificate to push him up the rank into a grandmaster. And that was done in front of all the uh, Ishiru people at, a, at a, one of their big tournaments in a, in a gymnasium of a high school. And they did the same thing along the way with two other people. 
because that's my job. That's my job not to leave the great people behind who will quit eventually because they don't get a good teacher. I don't have to be their teacher. I have to be their mind and their knowledge where they're going next, not to push it aside and walk out of a school because of who takes over. You know? So that's our job. That's our job to say, this guy's quality. Let's let's help him, you know, not to him to quit. I did the same thing with a Broward County Sheriff who was a sheriff for about 40-something years, and I met him when he was a fourth degree. And over the years, maybe 50 seminars I did for him and his organizations. He donates his time to the Boys and Girls Club of America. He started a program called COPS, K-O-P-S, Kids on Patrol. He puts a kid in a police car with him and drives him around. These are children out of bad neighborhoods that have no money for any schooling in martial arts. So he starts programs in parks, teaches for $20 a month, and and, and he's done this forever. I mean, uh, the Boys and Girls Club of America, I did five, six, seven hours for them, and, and for the D.A.R.E. program, I've done it for them, and maybe 50 seminars, and over the years, promoted him till he got to a point that I can push him into the World Council, get his system certified through the World Council, and have him promoted into a grandmaster through the World Council. His yeah. name is Joe Williams, and he's here in South Florida, and he's still a, a policeman in my town, right here in Lauderdale by the Sea. And I think that's our job, is when his teacher died, not to let him walk away and close the school that his teacher ran. And I I just was asked to come in and do a seminar for the police department and met him. And that's where it went to. It just became a bond. And I just care about him and saw the goodness in him for the children, for the children that couldn't afford martial arts for the kids that would come out of projects, you know. So it's our obligation to do that. It's our, it's our what, what we were put here for. You put your whole life in this, and you're going to let somebody walk away when they're quality. I can't do that. Right. And, you know, in, in your conversation, what you just described is a leader. Uh, and completing a, um, a doctorate, uh, I'm ABD, all but dissertation, an organization leadership, and I happened to finish with a 4.0 um, average. But what I was able to extract from the program, period, was is the difference between a leader and a manager. But what most important, a leader is someone who asks the question, how could I help you? That's what it boils down to. How could I help you? What do you yeah. need? You know, right. and this is pretty much what you just described is helping that individual achieve his or her goal and that I, I agree helps an individual to be a, a grandmaster but then too um and we're not just talking about punching and kicking oftentimes people think that it's all about punching and kicking kicking butt and taking names i mean that's a, a part of it but it is identifying who a person is within and helping that person to find himself whether that is related to politics whether that is related to addressing home matters or school matters or um, civic issues as well. Would you, would you agree that's what a grandmaster, what you well, see a grandmaster is, as? No, I, 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 I get in my school and I love the kids. I love right. the kids. And yes, absolutely, our job is to be a leader. And I, it's not that I want to be a leader and try. I really don't even wear my red belt until I get for pictures or things like that. I love my black belt. That's what I bled for. I have five that I bled for and and I worked for and, and everything. But I take children, introverted children, and we take those children and make them scream and holler and, and talk loud in the school and be powerful in the school. And when I think they can get in front of the class, six months, I put them in front of the class. I get behind them and I tell them what they're going to teach. And they're going to demonstrate and they're going to speak. And I tell them, you've got to speak louder. you got to speak louder. Because I want them to get in front of a classroom school 
and, yes. and be able to talk, and, and an auditorium and be able to talk and, and, and exude the knowledge that they have. This is explode with uh, strength. And we, we do that all the way from from when he's an introvert and won't let his mother's leg go and don't want to get on the floor, all the way through until he comes out of that shell. And then we work on somebody else. But we take the kids that are uh, on the bullier end or the stronger end, or, and they get quieted down, you know, because they see that they're not so strong, they're not so tough, you know. And, and you tell them that you're not going to get anywhere that way. And you teach them that you want to get get anywhere. You want people to like you. This is how you got to act. You got to be respectful. And and my the children in the school can tell you history from not only from our history, but not and not only all of judo history. They can, five and six year olds will tell you who invented the belt, who invented the judo gi, who invented the karate gi, where did it come from, and Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, tell you they'll tell you the history not only of our of what we teach history of jujitsu the history of judo the history of karate but they will tell you the history of taekwondo of, of many other arts because it's respecting other arts that they are also ancient and old and to be respected um, so oh. it, it's it, it's it's a mind game of making them smarter, stronger. The smarter they get, the stronger they get. The, the stronger they get, the more of a leader they are. You know, when I say strong, I don't mean only physically, but mentally strong. That they know this technique so much, so well, that they can get in front of a class, demonstrate the technique, and from my tutoring and back then, all my students that are, my instructors that are with me in the 20 years, 23 years, 25 years, that they'll stand in the back of them and say, okay, now you're going to teach front kick. Now you're going to teach this. You're going to teach this. And they go through the whole thing. Hands up. Keep your hands high. Protect your face. Keep your elbows in. And, say, and knee up on the kick. You know, and they'll kind of do the whole thing. And you're just tutoring them in the background where they slip a little bit, you know, and then you can correct, correct them, you know, for everything, for the course step, you know, the skip steps, et cetera. And you're making the child stronger every time gets up in front of that class. So right. He becomes more of a leader. Right. You know, I'm, I'm going to skip... By the way, their report cards come into the school. Yes. And, and you know, every class we ask them, what did you do for your mother and father this week? And they have to tell us, well, they get push-ups or duck walks. And then we also get the report cards. I go over every report card. Yes, that's good. Sometimes I get disappointed. I tell them I'm really disappointed. Because you got all A pluses. I can't even give you push ups. My God, I want to give so many push ups in my class. Come on, give me a bad report card so I can give you some push ups and you got to do your homework in my school. And I'm really happy about it. And the parents laugh, you know, because they say, okay, you got a B. I don't want no Bs. I got to get A's. So you're going to have to bring your, your homework in here and do your homework in here. And then I'll, if it's not legible, not, not nice and neat, I'll rip it up. You got to do it again. You know, uh, we're, we're pretty serious in this school. It's old time, it's old time martial arts. Excellent. You know, I, I want to change the subject just for a second. Um, now, everyone uh, think that martial arts. There's a lot of positive things about martial arts, and we try our best to do our best for the people in which we serve. But sometimes, you know, it doesn't work out that way. Can you think of a situation whereby you felt that you were challenged, whereby you felt that you didn't achieve your goal? Yeah, um, I had two in my life. And, uh, I had a child that just was um, brought up in a home that they did a lot of cursing and they did a lot of things and, and uh, really foul mouth. And, uh, and I had trouble with the parent over it, and I wound up putting the kid out. And I was so bad about it because it's not his fault, you know. But for him to come out with things in the dressing room, person, and and on the floor at me when I wanted him to do push-ups for saying something bad in the class, you know, 
and, and telling me I, I don't want to do this effing stuff. And, and I, I, did, I couldn't handle it anymore, so I had to put him and his, and his mother out. And I had another one that came in from the police department. I uh, was told her that they should come to my school after he made black belt in, a, in, a, in another school, a Taekwondo school that he was going to. And he was 40 pounds overweight at 12 years old. And she said, well, uh, a policeman told me I should bring him over here. And I said, wow. She said, uh, I, the doctor said he has to lose 40 pounds. I said, man, I never thought it was a lot of And she said, well, he so he to lose right away. Right away. And I try to make a joke, and I said, well, well, I can make a move right away, but I have to cut his leg off, you know? And and she made a face, and I said, listen, put him in the school, and and, and let, him, let him work out for him a free month before I let him join. And I I'm, understand, we're going we're gonna to weigh him every class, and he's going to work hard, you know? And she said, well... Uh, why does he have to start from the beginning again? I said, well, he can't do one push-up or one sit-up. Well, she said, we're at the end of our contract in the school, and they want to make him an instructor. For another $25 a month, they're going to make him an instructor. I said, man, he's wearing a black belt that he, he, he didn't marry. You're giving him a false sense of security. He's not He's working not out. Now. After we tested him, we can't do one for sure. Don't you understand the money? money? And um, yeah. I, I gave him a month for free. Right. And the mother, and I, I, I rewarded him constantly. And we then we gave him a second month for free. Not joining the school, just signing the release forms in case he got hurt or he hurt himself. But he wound up with five push-ups. In two months, couldn't do one at the start. Yeah. He wound up doing like three sit-ups that he got himself up. But that's a chore at somebody that was 40 pounds overweight at 12 years old. Yeah. And, and she was such a headache screaming at him, don't do them, you're sweating. Don't do no more. Don't. <laughs> I, and I told her, come on outside, I'm going to talk to you. I put her outside and I locked the door. <laughs> now, she stood out there screaming. And I said, the, the kid was good, but right. she just was a wreck. I let her back in, and I, I, I told her, you can't speak, and, and just leave him be. He's good. He's working out. And I would stay with him and tell him, you're doing great. Come on, try. Try a little more. Try a little more. Oh, you're doing great. And I, I wanted the kid to stay, and she pulled him out of the school, and I let her. That was a mistake. I should have argued with him more. I should have pushed him more because the kid would sweat. And he lost six pounds in two months. Mm -hmm. Now, that six pounds meant a lot to me because yes. we sweated six pounds off of him. You yes. know, and that meant a lot to me. You know, and I, I, I brought her upstairs into the gym and I said, look at the scale. It was, it was five and a half pounds less in two months. She said, yeah, but that's not enough. He's got to lose 40 pounds. That's not enough. And I'm not going to let him join here uh, unless you can uh, make him lose. I said, I can't make him lose with you screaming at him not to do it. And don't sweat, honey. You know? So finally, he said, no, I'm not going to let him do this no more. And he cried going out the door. You know? Wow. And that was a failure to me. Wow. You know? And I, I couldn't handle it. That was two of them that I let go. And I, 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 I still don't like myself for that. Well, you know, I I'm, argued more and pushed more, whatever I had I'm, to I'm confident that you you learn you, you you attained something, you gather something out, and you were able to um, use it to what the next person that maybe have needed you to gain that experience in order to help someone else out, you know. And so the thing is, you you recognize the experience. You rec it, it wasn't done with malice. Put it that way. And see, when we no. when we don't do things with malice, it's easy to forgive ourselves versus doing things with malice. And that's when our conscience just have a tendency just to eat us up when we do things with, um, with, with malice. Yeah. You know, when a parent comes in, they ask me what I teach. I teach respect, dignity, and honor. Mm. 
No, you but you teach martial arts. What do you teach? That's what I basically teach. I said, and I teach them how to take care of themselves every night to do things in an orderly fashion. They have to do their homework first. They have to do their workouts. They have to make sure their room is is, is everything. Nothing on the floors, nothing laying on chairs, nothing else to respect. Take care of their mother and father, you know, and to listen. And I tell every parent, you tell him once, once and once only. Don't keep calling them and saying, I mean, come on over here, come on over here, come out to eat, nothing. And, and you know, otherwise you got to start taking stuff away. And then they call me up. They call me up, and I go over the house. I've gone over the house and chased the kid through the rooms and hid in the closet. <laughs> you know, because he gave his mother such a hard time. They called me from the mall, the kid crying and screaming, wanted this, wanted that. I get on the phone, and I tell him, you're going to come in here, you're going to do duck walks, and you're going to quack all around that floor if you keep it up. You know, they just need guidance. Kids, children just need guidance. And most of the women don't have husbands. So the child learns how to, how to get it over on his mother by just not listening. And I tell him, you can't keep calling because that's wrong. You're teaching him that he can get away with it by you keep calling, keep calling, keep calling until he's ready. That's not how it works. No. No. I understand because we're trying to develop, if it's a male, we're trying to develop young men, you know, and who better to, to educate and to demonstrate than someone who is that, of, the, of that gender. I'm not saying that a female cannot, you know, raise, we're not talking about raising, we're talking about seeing, um, walking in someone's shoes of, um, right, right. Uh, yes. Yes. Well, they, um, the women, the mother works, and they don't have time to argue with the kids, so they let them get away with a lot. And that's right. a mistake, because you put them on a bad road of getting away with things, you know, and they'll keep getting away, and you don't want them to grow up like that. You know, it's just, like I say, it's our our responsibility to, to, to be that backup parent Yes. And with discipline and and with rules. You know, exactly. You know, I have uh, two two questions before we bring it to a close, if you would, please. The uh, yes. first question is, um, uh, is what um, what project are you working on uh, now? Are you uh, is, are, are there any projects you're working on at this time? Well, we, we, we change our art regular every three months. We go from karate, judo, and jiu-jitsu. And then we put it all together. We fight in the distance, move in, and grab and, and submit it on the floor. Then we do that constantly. And uh, the projects we're working on is still doing seminars for people for free, you yes. know, in all the schools and all the police departments down here, Brown County and you know, I've done all Brown County, Bay County, DEA, ATF, all through Florida back then. But now I just do for free for the organizations and places. And I do for my friends. You know, uh, I, I run I run a, two different schools when uh, uh, Hector Lopez, who has Taekwondo school, had his hip replaced. I ran the school and, and stayed there for a couple of weeks and taught and taught histories and and a lot of techniques and things, you know, and I enjoy my life a little better that I can have the liberty and the time to do that, you know, and then when the military calls, I run, you know, and I still have four projects to do for the military, and I told them after that I'd like to not go anymore. I still have Fort Lee, Virginia for the Army, Camp Pickett for the Marines, I did the White House last year, the SRT Division of Marines out of Quantico with the snipers on the roof and the door guards. I did the Capitol Police SWAT team, mm. does the gates and Homeland Security and Secret Service instructors. And they asked me to come back again, then they got new people and do it again, take down to control, handcuff again, lethal. And I still, and I was asked if I would go to FBI headquarters in Washington for their SWAT team and do that. And I, I told them I would if I can just wait until the weather breaks and I'll, right. I'll, I'll go back to Virginia. I've done all. You come from Virginia. I think you mentioned Virginia. Oh, oh yes. I'm in Virginia Beach at this moment. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, so I, I, yeah, I've done a lot of a lot of cities, in Chesterfield and Police Department. I've done a lot of places in Virginia. Yes. Yes. Anyway, well, well, that's pretty much my, my thing. I, I love the military. They need it desperately, and I've gotten medals from generals and awards, and I'm just very proud of that. Yeah. Uh, uh, fantastic. Now, if someone wanted to get in contact with you, how how would they get in contact with you? Well, they can call the school, and the school will help them through anything. And if it's directly to me, if the school can't help them, that they'll connect me with the person. You know? Yeah, yeah. And, and what's the name of the school? Carney Martial Arts. Right. So it's in Carney, yeah. it's in Carney New Jersey, and we're at uh, 201-997-3030 is the phone number. And that school is um, the oldest in America, in the same street. We have a gym upstairs. And when all the classes are separate, uh, we have three classes of children. That is the novice, intermediate, and more experienced children. And then we have a teenage class. And we have used to have three adult classes, and we cut them back to two adult classes, only because I didn't want the intermingling of uh, men and women and the dating services they were running or something. <coughs> so men and women work out together. The woman is treated same as, as right. the men and they get the same good techniques as a man does and they need them you know there's women techniques and men techniques women get, get attacked in different ways but we teach both men and women together and we teach women techniques and men techniques you know, to all. you know we teach getaway techniques to all the, to all the classes get away and hurting slightly to some of the classes, and then the only to the uh, adults do we teach anything lethal. Right, right. Well, Grandmaster, I, I really, really want to thank you, and um, I really learned a lot about you, even though we had the conversation. But um, I thank you, I thank you for sharing and taking out the forty-five minutes to an hour that you did share with Marshall. Yeah, Stout. that was quite a bit. Yeah, like, you yes, know, you're a member of the World Soccer Council. That means we are already close and bonded. <laughs> no, most no, no. Ask me for something, and I'm going to do my best to give it to you. Yeah, and and I really appreciate it because I mean, it's you know to give up 45 minutes, and I, I know it's pretty late there and and here, and um, you know we need some rest and everything. And but the unique thing is that you you get you took out your time to share the people who are interested in learning about you. Um, some of your experiences and what type of person you are. And I think that is wonderful to, to open yourself up and say, this is who I am. This is what I've done. And this is why I do what I do. And just to be open about it. I mean, I think that is wonderful just to be, you know, and I, w I must say that you do not appear to be a, a egocentric individual. You oh, no, I, no um, I'm, 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 I'm very low key. You yeah, know, I I uh, I was in the military and I traveled all over Europe. I uh, I did a lot of things for my country. I love my country, and and uh, I think that if you walk around strut your stuff, people don't respect you anyway. And if you want to give off that kind of a thing, you shouldn't be hold any kind of quality rank, you know, because it's wrong. And uh, I respect everyone. It doesn't matter. Uh, you know who they are. I give everybody a shot, you know, and then people like yourself, I bond myself to, you know. And I uh, thank you. And I uh, thank you. So, you know, okay. I, I, and my, the belts that we give are respected. There's a school here in, in Florida, in Davie, Florida, and the name is Iron Warriors. It's a big organization. I didn't know that, but it's right. the name is Iron Warriors, and one and only of my black belts that is here in Florida. I had two. Uh, is a chiropractor studying to be a doctor, and I told him he has to find a school, and, and I will try for him to, to continue. Yes. But he would he would travel everywhere with me to every police department, every you know place that we I I taught here, every seminar, and I wasn't doing as much. And I, he needed to get promoted after eight, nine years. He has been promoted. So I, I, he found the school, and, and they asked him. He's 
said he would start as a white belt. And that's what I told him. He go in, start as a white belt, and then the school. And let me come down, and I'll take a look. So he went to the school. He started in the school, and he loved it. And he called me, and he says, "I'd like to pay you something." He said, "They I went in there with my black belt, and they, I told him I'll start as a white belt." And they said, "Well, where'd you get that black belt?" And they said, "Well, Grandmaster Vince Marchetti." And the teacher told him. Well, the owner of the school told him, don't ever take that belt off. He's the golden rule of all jiu-jitsu in America. Like, I said, oh, my God, like, yeah, this guy is, uh, you know, trying to get a student or something. But he said, they asked, they asked me to bring you in two weeks. They're going to have an international meeting in the school, and they want you to come. I said, gee, I'm be embarrassed, you know. I don't, you know. So he, he said, listen, did they really knew all about you. So I said, okay, I'll go. So I went down and sat and, and he gave me an introduction in front of everybody that was overwhelming and there was two full birth colonels in this class. Full birth colonels, that's next to a general. One was retired and one was going to retire in six months who knew all about me and the history of me teaching every military base everywhere for free. And I had to explain them why. They said, you know, it just it confused me why the, you're not being paid by the Pentagon. And I told them I will not give my opinion of right. these special force men that are ready to give their lives and grade them. And they'll be put on a lower team if I grade one because they don't feel good. I grade one because they're not with his wife and he don't perform well. They'll put them on a lower team. And these guys take years to try to get to these teams you know, up higher and higher. And I said, I, I, I won't do that. I said, they pay my FA, they pay my hotel, and they pay my food, and they get taken out by a colonel or a general for dinner mm -hmm. the first night, and that's fine by me, and I do it for my country. I do it for me as well as for them. And everybody was clapping and everything, and I stayed till most of the class. And when I was ready to leave, they did it again, made another speech, and I was really honored. And my students said to me later, I was so, so proud of you. I was so proud I was wearing your belt, you know. So it pays to have a reputation that people will respect. And I always yeah. say that. You know, you do something wrong and everybody's going to remember it. You hurt somebody, you know, that in any way, without an explanation, they're going to remember it, you know. So I don't strut. I don't look for people to bow to me or nothing, I don't, not important. And I tell people on the street, you don't have to bow to me outside. In the school, it's different, you know. I don't need it. It's not necessary, you know. But people do, and that's great. But, you know, you, 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 know, you get to a point and you just say, I'm here to help. I'm not here to, you know, to, to be looked at as I'm somebody special. I just did it longer than you longer than other people and that's how I got my rank you know in, in, indeed indeed uh, uh, Grandmaster I really want to thank you uh, we've I come thank you I thank you for the honor uh, close respect. yeah no no problem and, and, and I really thank you for the, the interview again this is um, Pedro Bennett with uh, martialartsnow.com we you heard it from Grandmaster Vincent McKetty yourself and we want to thank you for tuning in and um, we'll be back soon. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Have a good night. Thank you.